Hi, and welcome to my Mi Arm robot here, which is controlled by a PS3 controller, which is here. And I just want to run through some of the uh, features which I've got in the program which is driving it. Um, if we look up on the screen, you can see that the program is ready to run. And if I just uh, select the screen with the mouse, we can, oops, not what I meant to do, we can start the program running and you can see that it shows on the screen the um, four values of the servers, the pan server, grip value, the lower arm and the upper arm and the numbers are just the servo positions. Now if we look at the um, PS3 controller, uh, at the moment it's unconnected. You can see the blue flashing light down here. If I press that button, it becomes connected, and now we can just see what controls are available. First of all, if I look at the four buttons on the front, um, this button on the right here is going to close the grip, and this one's going to open it. If you look at the grip values on the screen, you can see them changing as I do this. Um, these two buttons are going to control the pan position, you can see the pan value changing on the screen as I move backwards and forwards like that. Uh, this uh, joystick, the vertical motion of it, is going to control the lower arm, which you can raise or lower like that. And the uh, other one is going to control the upper arm, which we can um, tilt backwards and forwards like this. OK, so we've got the basis of control here. and. Um, in many cases this is as far as a robot arm goes. You can control it and do things with it. But what I've done here is to add the facility to actually record the program as well. And the arrow key here, if I press it, uh, will start the program in record mode. If I press it at the moment, in fact nothing will happen. And that's because the arm is not in its zero position. I need to press the left hand button here and you'll watch it jerk and go to the zero position. Uh, that's with the pan value of 90, the grip value 150, lower value 160 and the upper value 78. And now if I press the record button here and you look at the uh, screen, you can see it shows it's recording. Uh, I can stop the recording by pressing the stop button next door and um, that says it's stopped recording and in fact there's nothing recorded. If I press the central button here, it says there's no recorded uh, sequence on the screen. Well, let's uh, remedy that by putting in a recording. I'm going to put it into record mode. It says recording. I'm going to pan left. I'm going to um, open the, or close the grip, open the grip. I'm going to bring the arms back a little bit and down and a bit to the left. And we can then close the uh, buttons. We can lift the arms and we can rotate to the right and we'll go forward a bit and we'll just uh, plonk this down on the ground here somewhere like that and then release it and then we'll set the uh, arm back to the zero position and if you look at the screen now I'm going to press the stop record button and it stopped recording. If I now press the center button it says that there's a recorded sequence in memory and what we can do is that we can actually replay that so if I move the object back to where it was and we press one of these two buttons here, that button there is going to play it back in real as it was recorded. This button at the top will play it back uh, with the same uh, space between every command uh, rather than real time. And we'll see the difference. Let's go with the real time one to start with. We'll start that playing back. You can see the playback on the screen and you can see the action of the arm. You can see that there's pauses, as there were when we were actually recording in the first place. So it's not as quick as it could be, but it is going back at the same time at which we did the recording. And that's going to now close the grip, it's going to pick it up, and it's going to swing round. We're up to about 300 steps in the programme so far, and it's going to go forward up to 355, 361, 375, 380, 386, uh, 406, and about 400 and just over 450 and when it goes back to the reset position then we get back to the standard display. So that was doing it in time. Let's move the 
uh, device back again and this time we're going to press the top button and that's going to send in um, a more fluid motion with the same time between every command and the next. Here it goes. You see we don't get the, so many of the pauses we had before, it's a bit smoother. I'm going to uh, do it one more time, but I'm going to show a one additional feature, which is that if we start it replaying, we can actually pause the replay at any stage by pressing the hat here, pressing the down hat, and it will pause. When I press the top hat, it will start again. So I can pause it at any stage and continue. So we'll let it just pick up. And then we'll pause it there. Now, if I was to move it with one of the other controls, was they're still active, and I asked it to, re to continue with the replay, it won't do it because it realises that we've moved the arm and so it's lost its position in the sequence. So now we've just got manual control and we'd have to actually just put this down uh, manually, um, which we'll do like this, and then release it there and put the arms back to where they were. And there we are. So that's a demonstration of the recording process, which I hope you've enjoyed, and um, we'll show you a video a bit later on of a pre-recorded sequence which carries out quite a, a, um, a complicated sequence of instructions for the arm. Hi there, and welcome to a demonstration of my Mi Arm robot being put through its places. It's set up uh, on a Raspberry Pi with a Fortronix PyCon Zero board um, driving the servos, and it's controlled by means of a PS3 uh, wireless controller, which is here, and it just connects to the dongle which is plugged into the Pi. Um, the novel thing is that I've set this up so that uh, having gone through uh, a driving sequence and carried out a series of tasks, I can actually get the robot to replay um, from memory the moves that have been made to automate the process. So let's see that in action. I've got two uh, Lego structures here, one with a purple dot on it, which is going to be placed on this white dot down here. I've got another one with a green dot on it, which is going to be placed on this white dot over here so that they're equidistant on either side of the arm. The program is already loaded into memory and it's ready to run here, which I just do by pressing um, return on the keyboard. And you can see that it gives you the positions of the four servos, the pan servo, the grip servo, the lower arm one, and the upper arm one. These are their um, default positions uh, when we switch on. And so we can now get this operating. Uh, if I pick up the um, PS3 controller and I press this center button it tells me at the moment there's no recorded program in memory but if I move over to this button here I can recall from a file on the SD card one which was recorded previously and if we now go and look at the screen again we can see that there is indeed a recorded sequence in memory so I'm going to just start this off with the uh, controller which I will then leave over on the side here well away just to show that this is an automated process. So we'll press this button here to start the process playing and then switch straight away and you can see things are already beginning to happen. We're going to pick up the first object, swivel the arm around and then put it down in front of the arm like that. We'll then retract the arm, raise it and swivel around to the left and come down and pick up this second object here. That's going to be picked up. The arm will then swivel right round to the other side and it will hopefully deposit it on this white dot down here. There we go. 
It then finally has to come round to the central position again. And as it does so, you can see that on the screen, all the commands being replayed there. Let's now grab the second device and it's going to lift it, take it round and drop it in the position the first one was on that white dot down there. So that completes one run. We go back to the central position and you can see that we've now got the green dot uh, on the near side to me here and the purple dot on that side. So if we go back to the controller and we simply run the program again, it should put them back where they started from. Let's try that. Start it running again. Here we go. Coming down to pick up the first object. You can see the commands being replayed here. It swiveled round, dropped in the central position. The armour tracks and lifts. You have to be quite careful driving it that you don't foul the servers on each other there. And then it's moved down and comes forward and picks up the purple one, which is now done. It's going to swivel round and it's going to drop it in that position there and then return to the central position and pick up the green one and then swivel around and drop that down here hopefully on this white dot and then return to the park position in the center and it sits waiting for the next command to come. So I hope you can see that this is quite a nice uh, um, setup and it works well and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.